Well guys, we got a new video for you today. Three quarter by 92 foot, six by 36 IWRC EIP, right regular lay, with an open suede socket, one in only. See there? We stamped the serial numbers in there so that the customer always knows which one it is. And these will be proof tested also. Now, before we get started, some of you all keep asking me why we don't just slide it up on the rope. Well, there's two reasons. One, we don't want any bird caging at the base of the socket. The other reason is we don't want grease in the socket when we're trying to pour that resin. We don't want anything contaminating the resin. So that's the other reason. So we try to do things right. Might take a little longer, but it's right. I can guarantee you. All right, Gary, show them how you wrap that thing. <laughs> so we see that end off there, so when we put that socket on, it don't bird cage down there, and that's why another reason why we do it. Makes it look easy, don't he? Good. Yeah, those are the dull ones, ain't it? We don't like using real sharp ones when we're doing this, so we don't cut the wire, but there you go. The cameraman gets a workout on this kind of stuff. He has to go around in circles. <laughs> For those of you that complained about camera shots, <laughs> there's a lot that goes into this, trying to film somebody has to go work around in circles. And I know Gary's wishing I'd just get the heck out of the way. <laughs> but, yeah, it is what it is. Everybody got to make a dollar somehow. For those that don't know what tool we're using to do this, it's an expensive tool. You can't find them just anywhere. <laughs> it's called a turnbuckle body. <laughs> hey, it works. We got different size turnbuckle bodies. With them threads that's in there, it kind of grips it a little bit when you're bending them wires. Two sets of uh, pliers and bend them, but we figured it's uh, easier to just do it that way. Get them all broomed out. That way you can clean them good and the resin flows in between everything, makes a good cone.
some people out there said they couldn't see enough so i'm trying to get in tight on these shots where y'all can see what we're doing I bet you could make a really big wire brush out of that, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah. You know, it seems like one time that somebody made a piece of wire rope or some company wanted it and we broomed the ends out like this. I think it could have been for uh, the, the tracks in the floor for a gantry crane. And I think they attached it where it would run along the rails and sweep the rails off of any, you know, rocks or pieces of metal or anything like that. That was a long time ago. I'm surprised I even remembered that. I can't remember what I did yesterday most of the time. A good idea. Yeah. And we don't use sharp uh, pliers on this. Kind of forgot the name of those. End nips, I think is what they call them. Mm -hmm. But, uh, cause you don't wanna, don't wanna cut into the wires, put little indentions in them cause that's where they'll break at. Probably wouldn't hurt nothing on the ends, but we like things perfect around here. That's why we got Gary. <laughs> as soon as I turn this camera off, he's probably going to punch me. But anyway, that's what we got. So y'all can't see that now. Something wrong. But I did see a little blur come up just then. But there you go. Make sure this. It's still got that. All right. right. Look at that. It's cleaning it up pretty good. We might shake it around soak it a little bit longer what we're using is zep degreaser it's this stuff right here works pretty good and then right here <coughs> you don't breathe that stuff anyway that's just good old uh neurotic acid and then right here baking soda water so as soon as we get done etching it and that acid, putting that baking soda wash, water to neutralize the uh, acid. And then we'll put the socket on. We so picky about our stuff and we clean them, we lay them on a brand new clean cardboard box just to keep them clean. This is how we do it. Yeah, it's a slow process. If I had 10, 15, 20, whatever of these to do, I probably wouldn't do it this way. I might slide it on, but when you only got two to do, I'd rather do it this way and keep the socket real clean, not get any contaminants in it. We got the socket started. Right push, let off slow. There you go. Now, push it up a little more. Twist it, 
There you go. Keep twisting it. Pushing. There you go. All right. Push it. Push it. All right. Take that block of wood and a hammer and I got it. All right. Take a little bit more off. Hit it. Hit it. Keep going. All right. Hold up. Twist it. All right, knock it again, hit it hard. Don't be... There you go. All right. Hang on. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. There we go. And look at here. We'll see. Had a little trouble with that one, just, you know, but once we got it going, it went. No problem. Next one will go even smoother than that one because we've got our length of our cable figured out. Go ahead. Socket number two, no problem. All right, so what we're doing here is uh, closing the bottom up, sealing it up where the resin don't run out the bottom. And what you want to do is squeeze that thing real tight in there. Because if you don't get it in between the valleys of the wires, it will run all the way down the rope. We've seen that before, haven't we? Yeah. You squeeze it. You just give it the death grip on it. Like you, like when I make you mad and you want to choke me, just <laughs> squeeze the out of it. I almost slipped up. Can't do that on YouTube. <laughs> All right. It's another process you got to do. I'll show you the other ones in here in a little bit. Couldn't, couldn't time it around your phone call. Yeah, you can. <laughs> All right, we're pouring the resin in nice and slow. Don't want any air bubbles in it. So we pour it from the side and let it flow down to the other side. You better be on the end of this camera smelling this stuff. Mm -hmm. Might have to go down in there and lay down and take a nap when we get done. These sockets will hold a load after 30 minutes. It's ready to go into the field and do its job. But we'll, we'll probably test them tomorrow. We usually let them set at least an hour before we do anything to it. But
And we'll probably have to top it off once or twice after it sits, but that's all there is to it. See, there's a lot of work goes into making slings. By law, all these have to be tested two to one. And now you see how we do long ones. All you have to test is the end fittings on it. 
the wire rope was tested at the mill and we got a certificate on that so that's how it's done there you go see no gaps no bird caging and those little chips you see right there on the top is where it's seated they'll all seat a little bit and uh that was a little over the edge and that's what causes those little spots in it that's okay nothing wrong with it got this mess of repairs to do sliding choker hooks on them Chuck, can you get your hand out of the way where they can see what you're doing? <laughs> All right. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. <laughs> One little wire. <laughs> Don't it? Well, we got some more testing to do today on these two-legged uh, swings and sliding choker hooks on it. We're going to wrap them around this homemade device that I made for testing small objects like that in a choke or doing small, long pieces of wire rope simple looks a little rough but it's effective here's what we're going to be testing need slings we got slings we got you covered today <laughs> 